if you don't feel good enough as a Christian, which there's many times I don't feel good enough, but we have to remember that that's the whole point, is that we're not good enough. That we are saved by grace through faith alone. And that is the amazing gift, free gift of God. Every day sometimes I feel just this, this battle that goes on between our flesh and our spirit. And I want to encourage you today, if you're feeling like that, that know that there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ and that God's amazing gift of grace is so life-changing and that as a response to that our life changes since we're born again we grow in more and more into the likeness of Christ through our lives through these times of chastisement and learning and growing listen to this but for us also to whom it shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offences. I mean, just the picture of that verse. He was delivered for our offences. I am the good shepherd who is willing to die for the sheep. No one takes my life away from me. I give it up of my own free will. I have the right to give it up. And I have the right to take it back. Jesus was delivered unto death to take down our offences with him to the grave. And this was a free gift. So all those who believe on him, their sin and death itself was destroyed when Jesus went for us to the grave and then was raised again for our justification that we may be justified through him, through what he did. And my friends, that we cannot be saved by our own works. It's actually making a mockery of what he did for us to then try and take back the reins and say that we have to earn our way there. We are saved through our faith and if you believe in Jesus Christ and confess him as Lord, then that gift is imparted onto you, that your sin, all the things that you've done wrong in your life have been taken to the grave by the Lord Jesus Christ and destroyed. And then it says, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ, we have peace with God. We are no longer the children of wrath. We are no longer under condemnation. We've been given the gift of life. And this is great news. This is amazing news that we have peace with our Creator, even though we've messed up so much. And we still do. We still struggle. We still mess up. Yet, because of that gift, we are free and we have peace with our Creator not only in this life, but through death. When we die in this mortal body, that is not the end, we'll be raised to life because of what Jesus Christ did. Uh, we're justified through our faith in Jesus Christ's work, and then as a result, our life has changed. You know, how can our life ever be the same after seeing and experiencing true grace and salvation and redemption and free true free love and peace how can our life ever be what it used to be and so we are changed by the holy spirit sanctified through our life and then one day we'll be glorified to be with him so therefore being justified by faith we have peace with god through our lord jesus christ by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience and experience hope, and hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. For yet, when we were yet without strength, 
in due time Christ died for the ungodly. He died for the ungodly. He died for failures. He died for people who are not good enough. He died for sinners, for drug addicts, for sex addicts. He died for liars, for gossips, for thieves. Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more then, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more, being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And the message, this is the message, the powerful message of the Gospel, that it is a free gift that we cannot earn, but yet God did that for us. He sent the free gift to save us as we confess and lose our pride and accept Jesus to be our saviour, that our sins were paid for. Through him who was delivered for our offences and was raised again for our justification. Through Christ alone, Christ alone, Christ is the centre. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Saviour's love. God loves you um, just the way you are, but he refuses to leave you that way. You cannot earn this yourself, it is by faith alone. And let's allow God to change our lives through his grace and this amazing, powerful message of true love in the gospel. God bless you. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way, they are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. All we like sheep have gone astray, we have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. I am the Good Shepherd. As the Father knows me, and I know the Father, in the same way I know my sheep, and they know me. And I am willing to die for them. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace 
was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. I mean, what right have I got to get into heaven? If I die today, what could I claim of myself to get into heaven? To be in the presence and united in full unity with a holy God. What, what right have I got? What can I claim? I've done this, I've done that. Honestly, anything, any gift that I have is from God. So all I'm doing is using what God has given me in the first place. So it's all from God. So what right do I have of myself to get into heaven? I can claim nothing. I've done so many wicked things in my life which are totally foreign to his nature. I'm completely weak. I deserve nothing from him except to say to him, look, Lord, I am a sinner. I cannot stand in your presence. Please help me. I claim the gift you gave me, which is the ultimate gift, which is the sacrifice of Jesus himself, of the Son of God, of that God came to this earth in the flesh and gave himself as a perfect sacrifice so that I might live. That's the only merit that I can claim is in the righteousness of Christ and to, to plead with him, Lord Jesus, please save me because I am a wretch and I honestly do not, do not deserve to be with the Holy God. I do not deserve to be in heaven. That's the, just the truth. It's the truth. I've been an alcoholic. I've been addicted to lust, escapism through drugs, Marijuana. I've lied, I've stolen. I've manipulated. I've chased after money, I've chased after worldly things. This is me, this is what I have to show for my life. Right? Even the good things I've done have, some, have quite often been tainted with bad. I can show nothing of myself, I can only claim him when I stand before his throne, which will be true, which is true for all of us, we will all one day stand before the throne. All I can do is claim there is a Lord, there is a King who loves me, there is a King who gave his life so that I might be counted worthy through him, justified through him. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for your love that saw you come to this earth and live for me so that my life might be counted in yours and that I might be seen as perfect because of Jesus, because of his righteousness. Wow, what a gift. Thank you, Jesus. I could not stand without you. I would have no hope without your love. Thank you, Jesus Christ, that when I die, that I may live eternal life through you. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for saving us all. I am the gate. Those who come in by me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only in order to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come in order that you might have life. Life in all its fullness. Now there are two kinds of people in the world, only two kinds. Not black and white, not rich and poor. There are those who are dead in sin and there are those who are dead to sin. If I say most people are half saved, will you know what I mean? I mean this, you go to the cross but you never get on the cross. You go and get your sins forgiven and feel happy and you go do the same lousy thing again the next day. Come on, what kind of a salvation is that? But do you know right in the center of you, you're dead? Because you've no living relationship with God. 
You see, the miracle of the new birth is this, that when a man is really born, when he gets this life, he doesn't want that life. You're dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. Not when I die, but even now on this earth, I bid the world goodbye. Not tearfully, but cheerfully. All of its pleasures, its pomp and its pride. And Paul says, that's what the world is to me. It's a system of corruption and rottenness and vileness. It's anti-Christ from the world go. Is the world crucified to you tonight? Or does it fascinate you? Oh, I'm coming down the line. I mean, Jesus isn't looking for some sissies to serve him. He's looking for some men with guts and men with grace and men with determination. Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospel's, the same shall save it. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? I deserve death. You know, I am completely and utterly flawed. I glory in the fact that I am worthless without Jesus and that all I can do is point to the one who is worthy. That's, that's all I can do. I am the good shepherd. As the Father knows me, and I know the Father. In the same way I know my sheep, and they know me. And I am willing to die for them. And all of my talents have been given to me by him, and all of your talents have been given to you by him, so that we may all serve as one body in our varying areas, our varying means, our varying roles, in order to bring glory to him and to show the world that there is hope, there is life, there is truth, there is a real truth. Truth is not relative. It doesn't matter from opinion to opinion, there is one truth. And it's exciting, but none of us are worthy. Don't look to any preacher or human being as worthy, because in our weakness, he is strong. That's the whole point through the foolishness of, of, of all of us. He is glorified so that, you know, no flesh may glory in his presence because we're all weak. So let's bring glory to the one that has the power to save you, to change your life in a gospel that is life changing, not a dose of grace in order that we might just continue life as normal and have this in the back of our minds. No, a life changed for Jesus Christ, a life a completely different trajectory, not that we'll ever be perfect, but that we have a new goal, a new walk, that we might live for his glory. Again, being sanctified, a process through our lives, not something that we automatically reach straight away, but through our lives we are changed, but also that we have a new direction, that we don't live our life for ourselves, that we live our life for him. We try and find the ways that we can serve him, not serve ourselves anymore. There is no higher calling than to serve the Lord Jesus Christ and submit to his will. The world doesn't like that word at the moment, submit, discipline. The world doesn't like to be humble and give itself over to the will of another. But this is the King of Kings. There is no higher calling than to be called according to his will and purpose. There is nothing else. Let's submit to him. The reward is in heaven. Our flesh is temporary. It's not worth serving ourselves in this world and living for our own glory. I'm learning that too. I've, I've had to deal with pride. I've had to put to death the flesh. It's a daily battle. I'm right there with you, but we, we owe it to our Saviour, you know, we're forever in debt to his love. And after all this is said and done, there will be a new kingdom of righteousness, where everything will be made new. God demands more than coming to the cross, he demands going through the cross. And that's the offence, that it takes everything a man has and owns and trusts in. You see, 
defense of the, the, the sinner is most willing to come to the cross and kneel before it. He's willing to take the claims by a single confession of faith and, and just say, yes, Lord, I believe. He wants all of the benefits of the cross. He wants to believe that Christ is sacrificed, yes, and covered all his sins. Now, folks, that's being preached. The cross, though all the phraseology is there, it's sweetly talked about the cross. Come to the cross of Jesus and be forgiven. There's not one word about saying, going on with Christ into the tomb and to die. There's not a word about going down into the grave and coming out resurrected in newness of life. It's coming to the cross, kneel, say a prayer, and go back to your sins. Go back and no one say a word. You take it by faith. You are now the righteousness of Christ. No dying to sin, no being resurrected in newness of life. Now that's the offense of the cross. He demands full obedience. He demands everything we have. And I'm afraid a majority of people who claim to be Christians and saved in these last days have been to the cross, but they've never been through the cross. They've never been buried with Christ. Paul said, I died with Christ. I was raised with Christ. I was crucified with Christ. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life, freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful, and unbelieving, and the abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars, shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And so, my friend, the world wants to control you. The flesh wants to bind you up in the same sins that destroyed your life before you met the Lord. That's what it's about. It's about being saved. It's not about how righteous you are and what a good life you've lived. And when you get to heaven, you can say, Lord God, I've been a good person. And now what part of heaven do you have reserved for me? God says there is none righteous. No, not one. The only way through those gates of glory into the presence of God is by the blood shed at the cross at Calvary. Apply to your soul. You must be born again. Amen.